Hello, I'm Professor Rick Cooper from the Department of Psychological Sciences at Birkbeck University of London, and in this presentation I would like to talk to you about our MSc and MA course in Cognition and Computation. Let me start by explaining the title. What do we mean by Cognition and Computation? A dictionary definition of cognition is something like the following. Cognition is the mental action or process of acquiring knowledge and understanding through thought, experience and the senses. So cognition is about the mental processes underlying thought. One of the dominant views is that these mental processes are the product of information processing. In other words, we view cognition as computation or information processing that is implemented in neural hardware in the brain. So cognition and computation sits really at the intersection between psychological sciences and computer science. And we use simulation, computer, computational simulation, as a tool to develop and explore cognitive theories. In other words, we take theories of mental processes underlying thought and behaviour, we try to develop those theories into computational models, computational simulations, and use those simulations uh, to either make predictions, to evaluate theories, to ensure that the theories are consistent and complete and so on, and hopefully to further our understanding of mental processes underlying thought and action behaviour. The program consists of eight modules uh, and a dissertation. The dissertation is really what distinguishes what's different between the MSc and the MA programs. But the taught modules are the same. We have uh, generic research skills, which covers basics of how to do research, things like uh, literature search skills, library skills, uh, written skills, uh, presentation skills, how to give a presentation at conferences, how to write journal articles, how to submit your articles for publication, uh, how to uh, write grant applications for funding requests and things like this. It also covers aspects such as uh, ethics in research um, and basically is a, a general module that is done by many of our master's students. Another general module, module done by most of our master's students is advanced quantitative methods. This covers the uh, methods used within the behavioral sciences to analyze data. Some of these methods um, are covered in undergraduate psychology degrees, things like analysis of variance um, and maybe linear regression, logistic regression. But we extend these methods. We look at Bayesian methods as well. Um, some of the more uh, recently developed approaches to statistical analysis um, which are now you know, at the cutting edge of uh, behavioural sciences. And that course is essential because really, as a cognitive scientist, as somebody looking at cognition and computation, it's incredibly important that we understand what the data is telling us. Uh, the third course, Introduction to MATLAB Programming, basically covers uh, the, the basics of the MATLAB programming language. Uh, we need a language in which we can specify our computational models. There are many languages available out there. No language is perfect for everything. Uh, MATLAB is quite useful because not only can we use it for simulating cognitive processes, we can develop computational models using MATLAB. We can always also use MATLAB for uh, running behavioural experiments. We can use MATLAB to set up experiments that present stimuli on the screen and collect responses, and it has very good control over stimulus presentation and uh, response time collection, for example. Uh, we can also use MATLAB for analysing data and any, even for analysing brain imaging data, which is of huge amounts of data. Uh, the next two modules, Sensory Motor Processes and Attention and Cognitive Effective and Social Neurosciences, are basic psychology modules. They look at the cognitive psychology of lower level and higher level cognitive processes, respectively. Then we have three modules that are very much specific to the cognition and computation courses. Fundamental Debates in Cognitive Sciences covers some of the issues which have been fundamental in shaping the way that cognitive science has developed over the last 30, 40, 50 years now. Um, looking at things like nature-nurture, the nature of mental representation, uh, what is consciousness, for example. But we also take an historical perspective to try to understand why cognitive science has ended up in the way it has. What happened? What, why did sort of psychology develop the way it did in the early 19th century with behavioural psychology? Behavioural psychology gave way to cognitive psychology uh, and so on. What were the influences that led to those developments uh, and why has uh, cognitive science ended up where it is now? In computational approaches to mind, we look at 
some of the computational techniques that are used in implementing uh, current computational models. These include so-called connectionist techniques, symbolic modeling techniques, Bayesian techniques, and techniques of model evaluation. So connectionist techniques include things like looking at feed-forward networks, where lots of very small, uh, computationally simple processing devices operate in parallel um, to produce uh, and you know, operating on activation, feeding activation forward through multiple layers uh, to produce complex behaviors using learning algorithms, including things like deep learning. Uh, we also cover things like simple recurrent networks, uh, Boltzmann image machines, and so on. From the symbolic perspective, we look at things like um, uh, propositional representations and models, computational models that rely on propositional representations of knowledge. These tend to be higher level uh, models, models that are looking at much more sort of knowledge rich environments rather than some of the sort of uh, lower level models of, uh, relating to perception and uh, di more direct action, for example. Uh, we also look at Bayesian approaches to modeling. Uh, and some model evaluation techniques, which are now you know, becoming increasingly important. Uh, finally, in case studies in computational modeling of mind, we look at a number of examples of specific models. So the 10 modules, 10 lectures that make up that module, uh, each focus on distinct uh, cognitive model, or maybe several cognitive models of a similar task, related models. Um, and we go into those models in a great deal of detail. Often we uh, look at those models, we have uh, MATLAB code that we're able to look at uh, and explore those models, explore the behavior of those models. And in general, the models are presented by members of staff who've been heavily involved in either evaluating those models or creating those models in the first place. Many of the staff on the course, all of the staff on the course, in fact, are active researchers uh, working in computational modeling. So the thing that distinguishes the MSc and the MA, as I've said, is the dissertation. In the MSc, the dissertation is a self-contained research project in an area that is relevant to cognition and computation, whereas in the MA, the dissertation is an extended critical review of existing research within an area that is relevant to cognition and computation. So the MSc really involves doing novel or new research, whereas the MA is about reviewing existing research from a critical perspective. Both involve uh, or are assessed by a 10,000 word report. So it's a substantial piece of, a substantial document that needs to be produced here. Dissertations must always be supervised by an academic member of the department. They must fall within the general area of cognition and computation, and they must also be approved by the department or all research must be approved by the departmental ethics committee. Even if uh, we are not doing research with human participants, there are still ethical issues that need to be considered. Now, the program uh, is available, both programs are available either in one year full-time study or two years part-time study. Lectures and online materials are available for all modules uh, with face-to-face -face delivery. Um, most of the modules, as I say, are, are lecture-based. Uh, the dissertation is supervised research, so you have one-to-one -one meetings with your supervisor for the dissertation. Uh, most lectures are scheduled during daytime hours uh, though there are some evening lectures, um, but we try to concentrate lectures on a couple of days. So for part-time students, the course can be done one day uh, with one day day release from work, for example. You know, it might be sort of on Tuesday in first year and Thursday in second year, for example. Um, full-time students, again, there's, there's, there'll be two days full of lectures. Maybe it's Tuesdays and Thursdays uh, for the full uh, year. Um, but we expect you to do a similar amount, if not more, outside of class as done inside of class. So as a master's course, uh, we do expect you to do a lot of extra reading, a lot of additional reading in order to make sense of the material that we are presenting to you. And we will obviously provide you uh, with um, you know, guides to that reading. We'll suggest various different readings for all, all of our lectures. So the actual Birkbeck environment, uh, which supports this pro these two programs, um, is as follows. We're, we're based in the Department of Psychological Sciences. Our department has approximately 30 academic staff plus dedicated support staff, IT staff, for example, administrative staff. Uh, we have a number of different MSc programs which span the department's research strengths. So cognition and computation is one of the department's research strengths. So there are others. Um, but the department is highly active. Virtually everyone in the, every member of academic staff in the department 
uh, is publishing regularly. They all have um, very deep interests in the current uh, progress within um, their, their, their domain. Within cognition and computation, um, the primary staff who would be involved are myself, these I've listed near enough but order, but myself, Rick Cooper, uh, Eddie Davila, Ulrika Hahn, Dini Marischal, uh, Mike Oaksford, Marie Smith, and Tim Smith and Michael Thomas. As I say, all of us um, are publishing in uh, current work in current psychology and con cognitive science and cognitive modeling journals. The uh, course is also associated with uh, the Centre for Cognition, Computation and Modelling, which is an institutional research centre, uh, primarily within the Department of Psychological Sciences, but li with links to uh, the Department of Computer Science. And this tries to bring together all staff and students working in cognitive science and computational modelling. So it tries to provide some kind of sort of broader infrastructure. A number of labs are also associated with that centre. Um, so these include things like the Computational Cognitive Neuroscience Lab, the Reasoning and Argumentation Lab, the Dynamic Memory Cognition Lab, uh, Development Cognitive Neuroscience Lab, and many others. And I should probably stress as well, I mean, we have very strong links with uh, the uh, Centre for Brain and Cognitive Development, which is also in the Department of Psychological Sciences. And several members of staff are members of both centres. Uh, so, the programs are really aimed at psychology students with an interest in cognitive computation or students with a background in computation who have an interest in psychology. So we try to span those two areas. As I said at the beginning, we cover both, we are uh, like the intersection between psychology and computer science. And um, we believe that uh, we have students on the course uh, who have backgrounds in both of those disciplines. On completion of the course, some of our graduates have continued to do PhD in research positions. Um, so um, many students have stayed, some students have stayed within the department, some students have gone off to other departments doing PhDs. Uh, we also have some graduates who have gone to work in uh, the tech industries. Because one of the main growth areas in the tech industries at the moment is obviously cognitive computation. It's sort of trying to use the techniques um, that we learn from human cognition uh, to put those into um, our smartphones and our tablets. So you know, try to develop techniques such as um, human-like image recognition um, or language processing that we can fit into our, our tablets and make those machines um, more usable or more intelligent. Um, but you know, if you know about those techniques, then you also know that those techniques at the moment are a little bit fallible. They're not quite the way, they don't quite work the way that people work. They sometimes um, fail with our expectations. So trying to understand how people do these tasks, how people do uh, image recognition, how people do language processing, um, is vital to making these techniques, actually the, these um, tools that we have on our computers more functional um, so that they behave in the way that we expect them to behave. So if you're still listening, I hope that you are interested in applying. You can apply by completing the online application form. Uh, the web address is given on the slides here. Um, applications are considered on a case-by-case -case and a rolling basis. So in other words, we do look at all applications uh, individually. We don't have sort of a simple uh, yes, no rule. Um, obviously we do require certain minimum standards, um, but we also look at international qualifications. We recognize international qualifications. Um, we also, as I say, consider applications on a rolling basis. So there's no sort of fixed uh, deadline. It's not as if if you apply in January, we won't consider your application until July. Uh, we consider applications as they come in, try to make a decision on them as quickly as we can. Um, there is no closing date, but term does start late in September. So clearly you've got to get your application in before late September. I would advise applying sooner rather than later because it simply allows everyone to plan more accordingly. It allows us to plan, it allows you to plan, and it allows us to provide you with, for example, uh, pre-course reading and access to some pre-course materials. So if you are interested or have further questions, um, please do contact me. My email address is also given on the slides. Thank you very much for listening. I hope to see you soon in London. Bye.